Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to day 15 of Code Sober 2023. In yesterday's video, I showed you some of the best practices to do like the global.xml where you have all of your global elements, uh, the source main resources, uh, where you keep your dev.properties and local.properties because these may differ, which in this case they do because in the local.properties we have some ports 8081, 8082, or 8083. And in dev.properties, the ports are always 8081. I also forgot to tell you in the previous video to run these to make sure that they still work. So let's do that now. Um, we already have our code tover suite and we're gonna run that. Everything was deployed, beautiful. And now if we run localhost 8081 slash test, we get inside the experience layer if we run 8082 inside the process layer and 8083 inside the system layer. Now that we've verified that it runs, we can stop it. And now we can get started on calling the other layers. So let's start from Xcodetover, which is the experience layer. The experience layer is gonna call Pcodetover, which is the process layer. So let's go ahead and take an HTTP request connector and add it right here after the logger. Now here, you need to create an HTTP request configuration on, or configure an URL. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to global.xml and in global elements, we're gonna create a new HTTP request configuration. Let's start with the host. So for the host, we are gonna use Guess what? Yes, properties. Since we're gonna be calling pcodetover, let's call this pcodetover.http.host. And then we can copy and paste it in the port and then just change port. So now we have to set up this host and port inside our properties. So let's take those. And for now, you can just click OK from here. First, we are inside dev.properties. Um, we don't know the host yet or the port, so I'm just gonna leave this like this. And I'm gonna come back and do this after I know the URLs. You can also change this from Cloud Hub if you want. I'm just gonna copy these two so I can paste them everywhere else. This is dev again. Now let's go to local.properties and I'm gonna paste this. And here I do know this is 0000. zero, zero, zero. In the port, it's 8082, as far as I remember. So in our local, we can save this. We already have this. Dev is pending. And now we can go back to the Xcodetover main flow. We can select here the new configuration that we created. And now we have to set up a path. Now, we may want to not hard code this or we may want to just hard code it. <laughs> In my case, because I am using the same um, path URLs for the HTTP listener in all of them, then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. So I can actually, I'm gonna make this another property, which is gonna be just path or HTTP path because it's the same one in my case, but in your case, then if you will have several ones, then you might have to give them a specific name so you don't mix everything. All right, so now in dev.properties and in both of them, actually, I'm gonna create http.path, which is gonna be slash test. So I'm just gonna copy that and put it in dev and local properties right here. Now I'm just gonna use that for, um, I already put it here in my HTTP listener. I'm not gonna put it here in the request as well. So right here, path, I'm just gonna use the same thing and here we go. And as you can see here in the configuration, we're using HTTP, um, code over HTTP host, and then code over HTTP port, and then we have the path. And notice that the path does have to have the slash at the beginning. So that's why we added it like that in the properties. All right, that should be good enough, but I just want to rename these requests so I know what I'm calling. So calling P code tober or just P code tober, you know, yeah. Request to P code tober. 
pretty much that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to run this first to make sure that I have everything set up properly. And then I'm going to do the request from pcodeover to scodeover. All right, this was deployed. And now if I go back and run 8081 slash test, what do you think is going to come back? Inside the process layer. Because now it's calling the process layer inside the X layer. If we call 8082, it's still going to say inside the process layer. And if we call 8083, now it's going to say inside the system layer. So now let's run 8081 again. We had the process layer. Now we're going to connect the, from the process layer to the no, system layer. And we're going to see now the difference here. So go back and stop this. And because I already have it here, I'm just going to copy what I have in global.xml, the HTTP request config, and then I'm just going to change the property names. So let's head to pcodeover to global.xml. And in the configuration XML, I'm just going to paste the new thing and say yes to create new IDs. And now here, I'm just, I for me, it's easier to see the XML, but you can also glo go to global elements and check this out from here. So whatever works best for you. All right, so I'm inside the request config and here inside of pcodeover, now I'm going to call scodeover and scodeover, save this. Now let me take these two that I created from the other properties and put them in PicoTover. So inside PicoTover, source main resources, dev.properties. And remember that in dev, we do not have this information yet. Oh, but actually we do have the port. The port is always going to give me 8081. So let me actually go back to XCodeTover and change the port in dev because we already know that it's going to be 8081 all the way. We just need to get the host. All right, so back to pcodeover. Now this is going to be scodeover, scodeover. We don't have the host and that's it. So let me now, now I'm just going to save. All right, save that and then open local.properties again in pcodeover so you don't uh, mix yourself there. So now we have here scodeover, scodeover. The host is the same and the port. Now we know that this is 8083 because we're running this in local. So save that. And now finally, if we open pcodeover.xml to see the main flow, we can get the request HTTP component and put it here after the logger. And I already created the configuration, so I can just select here HTTP request configuration. And now remember that in path, we had selected the property HTTP.path. And that is all. If you get here, you will see HTTP, S code over host, S code over port, and HTTP path. And now here, I'm going to change the name to S code over so I can see it here. And I remember what I did. All right, so this looks good. Now X is going to call P and then P is going to call S, which is what we want. Let's run this and check it out. Beautiful. It is running. Now, if we go to try this out, localhost 8081 test. Now, instead of saying process layer, it's going to say system layer. Yes. Inside the system layer. We got it. Now, if you want to do something different, I'm going to stop this. You can also go here. Oh, we can also check the console, by the way, because so it, this says inside the experience layer and then um, inside the process layer and then inside the system layer. So all of them run. Uh, I, don't, I know you cannot see all of my logs, but here you can see experience layer, process layer, and at the bottom is system layer. Just trust me. <laughs> Or if you run this uh, in your computer, you will see those as well. Anyway, what you can do to kind of check out if you want to see this better, or actually we can do that in the next video. I will show you how to debug these three applications to see the actual processes changing from between each other. Also remember that tomorrow, October 16, is going to be the GA of any point code builder. 
but I am just gonna wait a little bit before I create those videos. So yes, tomorrow uh, I'm gonna show you how to debug these three layers. All right, that was code over day 15. I will see you tomorrow for day 16 and hopefully we will have the GA of any point code builder ACB. Bye.